Eternal Father, we want to thank you, O oh Lord, for this day and how you have blessed us to come together for worship. I want to thank you, Lord, how you have brought us this far along the way. I ask, O oh Lord, that in all that we do, that, Lord, we don't put our personal issues and the things we're dealing with above, O oh Heavenly Father, you help us, Lord, to keep ourselves grounded and rooted so that whatever we're dealing with, that we don't lose sight of Jesus Christ as our Lord and our Savior. We pray, O oh Lord, for the people that are in Haiti. We pray, O oh Lord, for as our young brother led us earlier that are down near the borders. We pray, O oh Lord, for the names of persons who we have called. We pray, O oh Lord, prayers for those whose issues and things have not even been voiced. I pray, O oh Lord, that as you continue to bring us together as a congregation, that you strengthen your witness in us so that, Lord, we can share the good news of Jesus Christ. I pray now, Lord, that you use me and that you use us in this time of sharing your word. In the name of Christ, we pray. Amen. 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 If you look with me in 2 Samuel chapter 6, beginning at verses 1 through 5. We find the following for our hearing. Again, David gathered together all the chosen men of Israel, 30,000. And David arose and went with all the people that were with him from Belea, or Bele of Judah, to bring up from thence the ark of God whose name is called by the name of the Lord of hosts that dwelleth between the cherubims. And they set the ark of God upon a new cart and brought it out of the house of Abinadab that was in Gibeah and Uzziah and Ahio, the sons of Abinadab, drave the new cart. And they brought it out of the house of Abinadab, which was at Gibeah, accompanying the ark of God. And Ohio went before the ark. And David and all the house of Israel prayed before the Lord on all manner of instruments made of fir wood, even on harps and on psalteries and on timbrels and on cornets and on symbols. And David and all the house of Israel played before the Lord on all manner of instruments made of fir wood, even on harps and on psalteries and on timbrels and on court nets and on symbols. For a thought this hour, brothers and sisters, as we come together on this second Sunday of July 2021, we want to use for a thought, no matter what you're going through, play your instrument. No matter what you're dealing with, play your instrument. You know, music is an important fabric of any race of people. And there are all kinds of music. All kinds of music that people enjoy listening to. Every nation and demographic and generation has their kind of music. Is that right? I didn't realize that Asians have, I believe the Chinese people, have a form of blues that is similar to our jazz and blues. Whether well, the person enjoys rap music, jazz, country, or classics, and even classical, all music has one major factor. Whether well, the person enjoys traditional or modern or contemporary or eclectic, all music has one essential factor. 
See, no matter how good music is, music needs sound in order to be heard. In order to have sound, it is necessary to have instruments. You know, any object, equipment, and human attribute may be used as an instrument that can produce sounds. Even a spoon or a horn or a tap or a hum can produce sounds. And you know, every person has an instrument. You can clap, you can stomp, or you can use your voice. And then many of us have been exposed to instruments. You've been introduced and taught to play an instrument. Whether you're gifted, talented, or can't even play a lick, you know something about instruments. The worst thing about music, singing, instruments, or notes is to have an instrument and then never play it. I wonder right now, how many of us have musical instruments in our houses and you don't even play it? Decoration. Amen. And you keep telling yourself that one day I'm going to blow the horn, hit the keys, thump the bass, and press the button, and it never happens. Whether you realize it or not, not all instruments are musical. There are instruments, human instruments, that can be used for the kingdom of God. But if we never use it, we can never make the sound, the impact that God will have us to in the kingdom. See, we all have instruments. We all have abilities and resources and experiences. And just like the piano that we put in the corner and will not play, that piano is telling you, I want to be played. We all have abilities like the trombone or the trumpet that you closed in the case and gathering dust. We all have abilities like the guitar whose strings need replacing and then plucking. Because many of us as human instrument, instruments, we need to be used. And we could be used and wanted to be used at times but we keep everything closed up and shut up and turned off. But it's time for us now, as we gradually transition back to church, to pull out your instrument. Don't pull it out with haste. Some things need assessment. But when you pull it out, know that we need to have some practice. It's time as we enter a long period of the pandemic to dust off your instruments. We don't know how long the virus will be here. It's time to dust off the spirits and dust off the mind and dust off the heart and dust off your hands to move in place so that we can usher in the kingdom of God making sounds and making services in this present age. Samuel helps us this out. Where it says in the third verse, 2 Samuel 6 and 3. And they set the ark of God upon a new cart and brought it out to the house of Abinadab that was in Gibeah. In Uzzah, in Ohio, the sons of Abinadab drave the new cart. These verses fall within the Old Testament books of history about Israel. David is the primary character in the life of Israel and Judah. After battle with the Philistine, God gave David victory. His efforts shift to move in the ark of God, which we find in Hebrews 9 and 4, was a golden censer. The ark of the covenant was overlaid round about with gold, and there was a golden pot that had manna and Aaron's rod and budded in the tables of the covenant. We're not focusing on the ark and its sacred representation of God, but highlighting the fact that the ark was moved upon a new cart. A new cart. It brought to mind this word new. The many times when we do for God, we don't always give new. 
To give new means to give fresh. To give a new thing. Many times when people have gave to the church, some people will not give what is new. But they give something that is old. They want to bring things to the church that has had its time and in many cases not worth a dime. And I never understand why people want to bring things to the church that they don't want at their house. But feel it's all right to bring it to God's house. Some years ago when we were having a clothing giveaway. One of the ladies in the back was sorting through the clothing and she became very upset. And I was walking down the hall and went inside of the classroom where she was working. And I wanted to know why. She was so mad at the clothes. She said, Reverend, look at this. People had brought used underwear, raggedy shoes, and clothes that were so worn out that it was no good. Unfortunately, not only here, church people everywhere have this belief that we can give to the church anything rather than our best. Some folks say, well, they better be glad I'm giving anything. Some people say if it were not for me, they wouldn't have anything. And then some folks say if it were not up to them, they wouldn't get a dime. But we need to realize that whenever you give, yes, even to the church, it ought to be something nice. Whatever you give, it's, it's all right to give something new. Whatever you give, don't let it be worn out. And don't let it be torn up. Don't let it be broken down. Let everybody say it needs to be new. Amen. <laughs> the other fact that we learn is about the plurality of working together. The writer said, they sent in verse 3. Second Samuel's Chapter 6, verse 4 said, and they brought it out of the house. They brought it. They brought it. They brought it out of the house of Abinadab, which was at Gibeah, accompanying the ark of God. And Ohio went before the ark. Verse 5 said, all the house. Verse 6 said, when they came. See, there are times when people in church work alone. And there are times when some people need to be by themselves and to themselves and on their own. We all have moments when we need to be by ourselves. But what we do regarding the kingdom of God, the kingdom of God, requires working together. Putting the mission above oneself. And I firmly believe that in every area of the church, when we put the mission of Christ first, not self, that things do work out and will work out much better. If our nation had been working together regarding COVID, we more than likely would not see over 600,000 people dead. Our children would not have suffered as much educationally. And many people would not have lost their homes and their incomes and life savings. See, when folk learn, yes, to work together, learn to work together even inside of the church, we can not only do more, but, but we can be more. When people learn to work together inside of the church, we can be strong, we can go harder, and we can last even longer. But when folk fight against pooling together because they master at pooling apart, then it affects the whole body. There are some folk then told you, well, he shouldn't have waited so long. I didn't went somewhere else. But keeping the church closed was not about one person. It was about how we look out for the whole family. So let other people know that Reverend looking out for all of us and not just you and your house. And you can tell them that I said it. Because when folk fight against the process, it impedes what God is doing, not for one person in one house, but what God is doing for all of our houses. For the word tells us in Psalms 133 and 1, Behold how good and how pleasant it is 
for brothers and sisters to dwell together in unity. How many times have you been in a group and rather than folk come together on the job or in the community of the ministry, they take time tearing it down. How many times has a husband and wife or a family needed to come together? But there are one person in the house that places their own wants and desires above the entire family. How many times have you worked on a job or a project and everyone on the team does not pull their weight, does not contribute to their share, does not do their work or hold up their end? How many times have you been a part of something when, when a person or individuals are more focused on their own needs instead of the needs of the whole? Before we leave this hour, there are a few things that are disclosed in the text that are imperative if you are not to be the one pulling against the family, if you are not to be the one that cannot give your best, if you are to play your instrument, yes, to the glory of God. For the text said in 2 Samuel 6 and 5, and David and all the house of Israel, you see the word all, played before the Lord, and all manner of instruments made of fir wood, even on harps and on psalteries and on timbrels and on cornets and cymbals. The first thing we learned in the text is that they had to practice. They had to practice. The first thing, before any of the soldiers or the warriors played an instrument, they had to practice. They all had to come together and practice and rehearse. They all played, but somebody had rehearsal time. When we used to be in the marching band or the concert band, and many of you know what it is to be in an ensemble or a choir. Some of you play football, tennis, sports, and baseball. A good coach, a good director, never allowed you to play if you didn't go to practice. And the problem with many folk is that they want to be seen and they want to be heard and they want to be known. But a lot of folk don't want to show up to practice. They, won't, they don't want to show up for the meeting or for rehearsal. They don't want to show up for training, but they want to tell you how to do everything. Some people just want to play. They want to show up to the job without any training. They want to show up on the field without any practice. They want to show up for the gig and no rehearsal. Some people believe that we can do what we do in church even without practice and without rehearsing and without training and without coming together. They had to have some time to go over the music. They needed time to go over the plan. They needed time to prepare. They needed time to know how to hold the instrument, time to learn the song, and time to practice the notes, and time to know who would be doing what, and at what time they would be doing it. They had practice. But the second thing is, they played publicly. The verse said that they played before the Lord. I never forget our band director, Mr. Hughley, would rehearse the band in the summer intentionally on the hottest days. And we would run and march and dance and play at the same time. Some of y'all remember those days. Our track and field coach, Coach Boswell, would have us to exercise and run and jump in our particular sport. And all the practice we were doing was not to be seen or to be uh, not heard or to be kept private. See, the text said that they played before the Lord, which meant at some point all the practice and all the rehearsing, there comes a time to be seen and to be heard and to be felt. What good is any instrument? If it's still in the case and still in the plastic, still in the box, what good is any instrument if it is not plugged up, stroked, and hit? What good is any ability, any talent, any gift? 
What good is any skill or any education? What good is any expertise and exposure if it is never known, if it is never shared, if it is never heard, and if it is never seen? See, whatever your instrument is, whatever your gift is, whatever your act of service is, Whatever you've been gifted by God and you have been trained to do and you have been educated to do and you have been equipped by mentors to do and you have been shaped by artisans to do and you have been molded by your family and your community to do, you take your gift. You take your expertise. You take your training and you make it public and you make an appearance and you make your presence known and you make your presence felt not because of you, but for the glory of God. But then finally, it is assumed based on 2 Samuel 6 and 1, go back and look at it again, that 30,000 soldiers or warriors did not simply show up to play instruments without knowing what to play, what instrument to play, and then who would play said instrument. I want to repeat it one more time. Verse 30 tells us that there were 30,000 people who were present at their hour. They just didn't show up to play what they wanted to play. But somebody was there to help them to see the instrument that they were gifted to play on. Because the instruments were not all the same. The word said that they differed being made of fir wood, harps, psalteries, timbrels, cornets, and cymbals. Which meant that they were placed in some kind of order, groups, and then sections. They play publicly and they practice, but no one takes the time to learn how to play and at some point not be heard and not be seen and not be known by others. See, for folk to play instruments, usually people are interested in how they entertain someone else. They entertain an audience. When people perform on the big stage or Broadway, it is to meet some level of satisfaction for the co consumer. You bought your ticket for the wrestling match. You bought tickets for the ball game. You bought tickets for the concert. And now you're waiting for folk to what? Entertain you. You're ready for folk to play and to perform and to entertain to your satisfaction. But in this case, the scripture stated Israel played before the Lord. Some artists take pride in the fact if they play in front of the president. Some entertainers are excited when they play in front of the queen. Some athletes or entertainers enjoy playing in certain arenas. And many bands take pride when they played in the Macy's parade. But this group right here, they didn't play for anyone. They didn't play for the king or the queen. They didn't play for the president or directors. But they played, yes they did, before the Lord. They had an audience, but not a human audience. They were not there to amuse one another. They were not there to play to their pleasure. They were not there to the dignitary's satisfaction. They were not there to meet uh, the human taste and desires of one style. Because some things we, we really think is about us. Sometimes we really believe it is about us and our needs and our desires. When really, it is all about the Lord. See, the text said they played before the Lord. They were not there to satisfy themselves or for consumers. They were not there for personal or self-gratification. They were not there to comprise or to construe or to confuse. They were not there to perform for an audience of people, but they were there for an audience of one. Every time, every time, every time we come together, 
No matter what name is on the ministry. No matter what name is on the board. No matter whether the F is on the outside or the inside. We don't come for us. We come to glorify the Lord. The text said that Israel played before the Lord. And when you play for Jesus, Colossians 3 and 17 says, Whatsoever you do in word or deed, you do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus. If you take it out of the trash, you do it in his name. When you come to the lot, you do it in his name. When we come to church, we do it in his name. Whatever ministry you're working with, you do it in his name. Whatever you play your instrument, whatever God gifted you to do, you do it to God's glory. Sometimes we're so concerned with trying to satisfy ourselves. Sometimes we're so concerned with trying to satisfy other folk. Sometimes we become distracted and even disturbed. Sometimes we lose our focus and intentionality. But whatever you do, whatever you do, the primary goal is to play for him. Whatever you do, the primary mission is to play for him. Whatever you do, the primary purpose is to play for him. Whatever you do, your primary motivation is to play for him. Whatever you do, your intention is to play for him. You will always miss a beat every now and again. You always miss a note every now and again. But whatever you do, you do it to the glory of God. You always have a meeting to go to. You always have to show up for practice. But whatever you do, you do it to the glory of God. You will always have a meeting to go to. You will always have time to rehearse. You will always find time to put in the training and, and preparation and get it ready. But whatever you do, whatever you say, and wherever you go, you do it to the glory of God. You always have somebody complaining in some angst. You always have somebody naysaying and gossip. You always have somebody talking about you. But whatever you do, you do it to the glory of God. You always have some hurdles and some oppositions. You always have some dark days and some challenges. But whatever you do, you do it to the glory of God. You always have more talk than help. You always have more questions than answers. But whatever you do, whatever you do, you do it to the glory of God. Whatever you do, you play your instrument to the glory of God. You won't sound like everybody else. You won't work like everybody else. You won't look like everybody else. You won't dress like everybody else. Whatever you do, you do it to the glory of God. And while you at it, do it to God's honor. While you at it, you give God praise. Thank God for your instrument. Thank God for your gift. Your gift may not be like somebody else's gift, but thank God for it anyway. Thank God for your talent. Thank God for your education. Thank God for your abilities. It may not be like somebody else. Thank God for what you know. Thank God for your certificate. Thank God for your retirement. Thank God for your expertise. Thank God for the privilege. Thank God for the opportunity. Thank God for one more chance. Thank God for all that he's done. Whatever your gift is, you play your gift. Whatever your service is, you play your gift. Whatever time you have, you play your gift. Whether it's a lot or a little, you play your gift. You play your gift. You play. Play your gift. Play your gift. Play your gift. Come on, let's give God some praise.